Good morning, evening, or something in between. Welcome back to our video series, Don't Mess With The Mouse, Part 2. In a world driven by your mouse. Fast doesn't mean efficient, and efficient doesn't mean fast. Slow down and take control to speed things up. I have been a salaries instructor in the Great Lakes region for over 20 years, and in my experience, I see a lot of students waste time with unnecessary mouse movements. In this sequel, we will prove that slowing down the mouse will speed things up. If you move too fast, you will miss special icons and symbols to help expedite tedious mouse movements. So here goes. Better mouse control, slowing down to speed things up. What I mean by that is a lot of users tend to think that they need to move that mouse around their screen like this in order for them to be efficient, and they really don't need to. We need to slow down the mouse so we can take advantage of a lot of the commands that Solvers gives us to make our lives easier when we're designing in CAD. We have content sensitive menus, but you'll only see them if you slow down. As you can see, we have a part right here. When I come over and I select a face, you're gonna get a toolbar that pops up immediately after selecting the face, but you're not gonna see it if you move your mouse around too much. You'll notice that right here, we have our sketch command, but it's not just for faces. If I'm inside of a part and I pick on an edge, I get my edge commands. If I'm inside of a sketch and I pick on multiple entities in that sketch, I get a toolbar that has my sketch relations. If I'm inside of an assembly and I pick on multiple faces, I will get my mate toolbar. And last but not least, if I'm inside of a drawing and I pick on a view, I get my view commands. So let's take a look at how these work. Let's look at the slowdown method. I'm gonna open up this assembly of a foam arrow shooter. Then I'm gonna turn on my mate tool. What I see a lot of my students do in the essentials class, they'll turn on the mate command and they'll pick on the two faces, confirm concentric and the green check to apply. Then they'll proceed and add in this coincident. Flat face to flat face, confirm that it is coincident, and then hit the green check to apply. And finally, they'll pick on these two faces to set these two as being parallel to each other. Confirm it, and then the green check. Then they dart all the way over to the dialog box and hit the green check to end the command. Not that bad. Could we perfect our performance? Let's see. We're gonna go through and select the two faces using our control key. We're going to see our dialog box, no mate window, and let's begin. As you can see, we started a timer to see exactly how long this is going to take us. And we're done. 16 seconds. Do you say that's being efficient and proficient? What we want to do is we want to stop the zigzag. We don't need to do this on our screen. We want to keep our mouse in place at all times. And this also includes our dialog boxes. So here we have our fillet command. And inside, you're going to notice that we have an option here called show selection toolbar. And this is on automatic, so you don't need to turn this thing on. But what I have here is I have a part. And with that part, I pick on an edge. And by picking on the edge and not moving my cursor around, and inside this pop-up, I get a range of different options. And what these options do, they're going to give me automatic selection tools. So right here, if I pick on this first one, what I get is it automatically selects those other three edges. So if you do the mouse button click count, that was two picks, one for the edge, one for the icon, and that gave me four edges. Two picks, four edges. Does that seem efficient to you? Another handy tool, whenever you go to do any type of extrusion, let it be a boss or a cut, you're going to notice as I go into the command, if I don't move my cursor, my icon has a little mouse next to it. And what that mouse does is it's my green check to apply, which means I don't have to always go back to the dialog box to constantly hit the green check in the upper left hand corner. I can do it right where my cursor is. Well, we not only have this one, but what if we have a dialog box that has multiple windows in it? One thing I see a lot of people do is I'll see them pick on the face, 
then they'll dart over here and they'll pick in the window then they'll dart over here they'll pick on a face then they'll dart over here and they'll pick in the window they'll dart over here they'll rotate them all around they'll pick on the back face and then they'll dart over here and hit the green check no we don't do that what we do is that if you keep your cursor in place you're gonna see our next command and what this is gonna do is gonna tab us down to the next window these two icons are available to us quite often inside of the Sour software. We use it mostly for boss, extrudes, fillets, chamfers, pretty much everything. And then the return key or next or tab, we use that primarily for fillets and chamfers when we have a dialog box that has multiple windows inside of it. Oops, you moved your mouse. So you saw the icon and you weren't quite ready for it and you moved your mouse. What do we do? Well, while you're in the command, you can also right mouse in empty space. And by doing the right mouse, you're gonna get another content sensitive menu. And inside that menu, you're gonna notice up at the top, we can confirm by saying okay or cancel. Inside the window, we also have direction one. So you can actually set up the end condition for what we want to happen for direction one. And if you look right below that, we also have the end condition for direction two. So let's take a look at how these work. So a part file with a rectangle in it, I'm gonna go hit the boss extrude command. With my on-screen displays, I'm gonna grab the arrow at the center, drag it to the dimension I want, and wait. You're gonna notice that we have a green check that pops up right next to my cursor. When I hit that, we're ready to go. Then I pick on the face, I go to my sketch tool, I go to my circle command, and I'm going to draw in a circle. So this is SOLIDWORKS 101 right now. And I go to my dimension tool, plop a dimension on there, place it, give it a value, and then once again I'm going to go to my cut command. So features tab, extruded cut. Then right here in space what I can do is I can do a right click and say through all. Once again if I don't move I can hit the green check to apply. Let's go add our fillet. Activate in the fillet tool. You're gonna to notice that inside the dialog box we have an option here called show selection toolbar. What this does is that when I pick on a face and I don't move, I get my handy dandy selection command. By picking on the first icon, it grabs all four edges for me. Then I right click, say okay. And then by doing this, it'll complete the fillet tool. So you'll notice that two picks gave me four edges. Multi-window dialog boxes. These are typically available to you when you do the fillet command, more specifically the full round fillet. And in my essentials class, I'll notice that in order to fill in those three boxes, students will go back and forth on their screen to complete their mission of building the fillet. You'll notice how long that took just to get this thing done. Well, instead of doing that, what about the right mouse next? I'm gonna reposition the model back into its original state. I'm gonna go back and hit the fillet command. You're gonna notice it's automatically set to the full round fillet. Left, right, left, right, rotate, left, right, done. Let's see that again, but let's slow it down a little bit. So let me hit undo. I rotate this model back around, so I put it back into its original position, sort of. Now let's go back to our fillet command. Now it's gonna remember that we did our full round fill in the last step. So watch this, left, right, left, right, rotate this thing around, left, green check to apply with the right mouse button and I'm completed. Replay was set to half speed, so you have to admit that was still pretty fast. Wait, what was that? We've been approved for part three. Mouse gestures coming to a screen near you.